What about you? What's your second one? I'm actually going to go a book. Now, Ooh. yeah, so there's a lot of good podcasts out there. There really is. But I didn't actually put a podcast on my list this year. And reason for it is that I felt, well, other things were more deserving in all honesty. Now, <laughs> I read a book by Garrett Gunderson called Disrupting Sacred Cows. Now, the first thing I'll say is I don't love that title. <laughs> especially, for, especially for what's in the book. <laughs> because he's he's – Book before it was like slaying the sacred cow, right? Like this is like the next one. Yeah. The, um, so this is a I call it a it's a follow on book, but you do not need to read the previous one to have Got any it. understand your context. It's I think he maybe did this naming convention just so people would see the relatability connection. But it, yep. Yeah, but it wouldn't be needed at all. Now, why I love this book and why it comes into the investing one is Garrett. Uh, Previously owned a company called Wealth Factory. I believe he sold it since. And his specialty was helping business owners create wealth in the States. Um, he was or may still be a financial planner as well. I'll, I'll set out as well. But this book, the way he uh, thinks about finance is very, very different than I have come across in other realms. And it was honestly truly impactful on me. And I'll talk about the main thing that I um, got from his book is he looks at the idea of that most people when it comes to creating like, we'll call it like in, investing thesis and things, it's just all about the asset. They just talk about property or shares, for example, here, where his view and what he really outlines in this book is that it's not about the investments, it's about the investor. And I just thought that was such an interesting insight. And the idea being, and I'll give you the example, if you're obsessed with real estate, not naming anyone, and it's like on the weekends, you're researching real estate and you read books on real estate and you're in that. The likelihood of you being successful in investing in real estate in that example is much higher because you're interested in it. You understand how it works. You're more prepared to face challenges. You will understand things and know things that will give you a significant edge over people that don't do that. Where if you just focus on where the best return is and maybe you end up in wine, let's say, but you know nothing about wine or collectibles and things like that. You just see that the returns overall being great there. You won't ever have the depth of knowledge or interest to actually create those types of returns. So again, I'm not saying this is necessarily a good uh, opinion and definitely not financial advice, but his whole thesis is that just like in business, you're going to have types of businesses that you're more suited to, you're biased mm. towards. Like I've had a lot of success with like, for example, uh, we'll call it, let's just go with digital services, digital recurring services, where if you put me into running a restaurant, the chances of me succeeding there is going to be low. And the book really aims around working on what your investor DNA is, where you're best suited to meet those returns, how to approach and think about investing in a bit of a different way. And he's quite anti-diversification, I will say. He's like, when you diversify and again, this is the part where I'm like, maybe, uh, maybe you know, this is the one that makes me uncomfortable because I think some people should diversify. But um, the idea being is diversification spreads you too thin. It's like it's like owning five or six different businesses that do different things. How could you possibly be good at any of them? Yeah. I, I, I kind of sit on the fence with you on that one, like just to pick that, to pull on that thread for a second. Uh, because in business, you're right, like jumping from a digital services business to a restaurant in that example is <laughs> like the chalk and cheese. It's like when I had a services business and tried to get into software as a service, like I just unlearned everything that I'd learned and just started from scratch again. So I, I get it, but the diversification is like, hey, I've done the thing. Um, I thoroughly enjoy Garrett's content as well from a from an entertainment perspective. I think that he – tells stories really well and he simplifies complex concepts. Uh, one of the challenges I've found is like trying to translate US to Australia, <laughs> like on some of his deeper things. So I'm like, okay, cool. I, I get it. Um, I get what a 401k is compared to a superannuation now. <laughs> Just say it. Um, but overall, his content, easy to consume. He says complex concepts in a very story form uh, whilst adding some humor to it. Like I, I concur, although I haven't read the book, I do like Garrett as an individual and as a like an educator. Yeah, I oh, will say his YouTube channel is fantastic. I quite enjoyed that as well. To your point, though, definitely US focused. That's one of the things where I would say maybe 
20 to 30% of his content. Just doesn't apply because of the differences totally. in there. But I think the book is a winner for me. So I'm going to give that my second award. I have found <clears> – <throat> I have found some of the education that I've received from people in the US, once I've under- grasped the concepts of like what applies in the US versus Australia, like did you know that the US has an interest rate for the entire life of the home loan? <gasps> I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, they do 30-year do get- fixed rates. 30-year fixed rates. And I'm like, how do I get that in Australia? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. Once I understood sort of these nuances – the education from the US became so much more applicable. Like I could pick out what was applicable versus leaving behind the things of like, well, that just doesn't work here. That doesn't apply. And so I've found US resources even more powerful as I've gone on because I, I can pick it out and sort of find out what's relevant or not. But good choice. Right. I like that one. Hey, fellow business owner. If this topic and value packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into creating wealth inside, and outside your business, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.